letters from an astrophysicist. But you're the astrophysicist. These aren't what people wrote you. This is what you wrote back to people? It's both. It's, it's both, but it also contains letters that I just wrote. To, uh, one to my parents, one to NASA. Uh, there was a eulogy I wrote in the form of a letter to my father, who passed a couple of years ago. There's an open letter that I wrote on September 12th, 2001, because I live four blocks from Ground Zero. And just to witness that was... I mean, I, I get, I well up just remembering that, though my correspondence related to that, an open letter to family and colleagues so they knew my family was safe, uh, that's in there, as well as a lot of other letters from people who are in search of meaning, and they write to me on the hope, and I think I delivered it in at least some of the cases, where I can shed some astrophysics sort of cosmic perspective luminosity on a decision they need to make next. And it includes letters from people in prison. There are letters from people... Where, where, where are you going? I'm writing down the phrase cosmic perspective luminosity. <laughs> <laughs> a cosmic... A, That's, a, I, I want to name a band that... The, the cosmic perspective um, can... Well, I could say shed light on it, but luminosity is what we call what stars do. So that's, it, comes okay. out of, it, it comes out of that. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a woman, there's a Jewish woman raising a 10-year-old son who's on the spectrum, autism spectrum, and he comes home from Hebrew school, and he says he doesn't believe in God and that, he's, that he thinks the, the Bible's just stories. And she said, where did you get these ideas? And he said, Cosmos. <laughs> Are so, you happy, Neil? No, no. <laughs> Are you happy? Haven't the Jews suffered enough, no, no. Neil? <laughs> well, I, I gotta get, I gotta get to this, this oh, okay. picture letter. Wait, this, wait, this is a letter from 2006. Letter. Wait, wait, I gotta say. So, so at the, at, in the after that exchange, she invited me to his bar mitzvah. Oh, that's nice. So that's nice. Yeah, that was nice. It was very. Um, sweet. This is everybody knows that uh, you were. Uh, uh, involved with the demotion of Pluto from planet to also ran it. Get over it. No, no, no. <laughs> Nobody's over it. No one forgives you, but take a look at this. Would you mind reading the people what the young person wrote to you here? Okay, so this in the book is reproduced in facsimile. So this sure. is from a, from a fourth grader. A pissed off fourth grader. <laughs> it's in the chapter called Hate Mail. Oh, okay. Third grader. Dear scientist. You're mocking a fourth grader? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I'm just, because they don't see the word spelled, I am enunciating. Dear scientist, what do you call Pluto if it's not a planet anymore? If you make it a planet again, all the science books will be right. Why she's worried about the profit margins of publishers, I will never know. Do people live on Pluto? If there are people who live there, then they won't exist. Why can't Pluto be a planet? If it's small, doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be a planet anymore. Some people like Pluto. And if it doesn't exist, then they don't have a favorite planet. Please write back, but not in cursive, because I can't read in cursive. <laughs> I just want to know, we dug up that child. She's now in college, majoring in environmental studies in Florida. So she, wow. she turned out OK in spite of this. Well, Letters from an Astrophysicist is on sale now. Neil deGrasse Tyson, everybody. Neil, good to All see right. you again. <laughs> we'll be right back with former National Security Advisor Susan Rice.